Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to 10 day of the Tata Steel 2021 tournament and today I would like to show you uh, the most complicated another crazy game from that round which was probably missed by many of the channels and I would like to definitely show this one and um, with the white pieces we have Jan Krzysztof Duda number one in Poland and his opponent with the black pieces Jordan van Forest from Netherlands now Jordan uh, he was my favorite player in the Tata Steel 2020. He played extremely crazy openings and um, a lot of uh, crazy lines. Uh, very interesting and he got a very very good score overall uh, in 2020. And in this tournament he played like quite cold chess, quite solid one. So we didn't see a fireworks in his games. So I was waiting for the game against Jan Krzysztof Duda because Jan Krzysztof Duda doesn't care about the, you know, complications. He goes for the, for the most complicated lines and uh, sometimes, you know, the game can get out of the control. So Jan Krzysztof Duda opened with d4. Nothing special at the beginning. We have knight f6, we have c4, we have g6, uh, we have knight f3, we have bishop g7. And now, uh, of course, knight c3 is possible. Of course, g3 is possible. But here we have e3. So it looks like more passive, uh, but still very, very solid move. We have the castle. Uh, and now bishop e2. So it's similar to the some kind of the uh, king's Indian defense. However, there is no knight on c3, and this pawn is not on the on the e4 yet. Uh, Jordan just went for the king's Indian, so pretty uh, no normal structure here. And now knight c3 by Jan Krzysztof Duda. So black can play uh, pretty normal here, a very usual plan plans knight b to d7 uh, c5 c6 and so on uh, this this of course uh, well known however we have e5 so we know already that if this pawn is on e4 um, with the you know similar fashion in the king's indian then e5 move is possible uh, we've seen that yesterday for example uh, when Caruana played uh, with the Radek Wojtaszek so this is all you know pretty normal stuff however here uh, this pawn is still on e3, so it's not vulnerable on the e4, and it looks like uh, Jordan Van Forest just blundered the pawn. However, this is Jordan, and we've seen already a lot of games, crazy games, where, where he sacrificed the pawn or two. And indeed, in the Netherlands league, he played actually similar system. This is at least uh, what Jan Gustafsson said in the studio. Uh, but Jan Krzysztof Duda doesn't really care about what is the theory here? He see, okay, there is the pawn. So prove your then what you prepared here. We have one game in the database where actually a white went just for the castle. The game continued and ended with the draw, but it was not the grandmasters game. Here, Jan Krzysztof um, Duda, super grandmasters, uh, over 2700 ranking. Uh, want to prove? Uh, okay, that's not uh, that's nothing uh, special here. We have D takes on e5 and knight e5 uh, calmly just winning the uh, the pawn we have queen e7 uh, jordan of course want to keep the queens on the on the board now the knight is under attack so knight uh, calmly goes to f3 we have rook d8 now attacking the queen so it starts to be a little bit, you know, a pressure. But that was, of course, the idea of this sacrifice. Uh, so we have queen b3 and now a5. Another interesting move. And uh, what is the idea? The, the funny thing that this a5 move is the best move, uh, according at least to the stockfish. So... Uh, you know, definitely some kind of preparation and Jordan played at similar positions um, quite from time to time. So definitely he knows, you know, how to play that. Uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda didn't see any danger here because what can happen? A4, I, I'm gonna take with the knight and then, yeah, you're gonna, you know, lose two pawns. What is your compensation? So he just castle. And now, indeed, we have A4. Now, Jan Krzysztof Duda thought for a while, he took that pawn and now we have the critical moment where knight e4 is played and now this position just became insane. Now, what is going on here? First of all, uh, 
this knight can be a target for now of course it's out of the game and it's not that easy to get back with the knight so let me just show you what is the problem if the knight goes to c3 saying okay let's exchange of course black can uh, double the pawns here however knight c5 and where you gonna move the queen not many squares for the queen, that's the problem. If the queen goes to c2, which is the best move in the position? The problem is bishop f5, and now you cannot move the queen anywhere. Uh, this is the problem. Uh, even you cannot bring the bishop on the on the d3 because if it's of course controlled by the all the black pieces. So uh, you have to play something like e4 and then knight e4. Uh, knight d5 is the strongest, but keep in mind that this knight gonna jump to g3 with the attack on the queen. So it already looks bad. Black of course cannot waste the time because the queen is under attack. First have to uh, sacrifice the exchange and after c takes on d5 get the exchange back here with the knight g3 so probably bishop d3 and now also not to waste the tempo we would have you know pretty much uh, the position which is equal uh, white has this extra pawn but let's say okay this pawn gonna collapse so sooner or later and black has a very nice bishop here uh, has a very nice open uh, file open a file to to continue development and so on so definitely it's a pretty good position for black still so this all of these are the problems rook d1 would probably solve all the problems uh, but young Krzysztof Duda doesn't want to solve what could happen let's say rook d1 bishop d1 uh, probably just development c6 it's still very tricky to to move the the knight back probably on some point it would have to happen uh, and here black doesn't have the fancy way of continuing because uh, still can of course go for the knight c5 and the bishop f5 idea I would this time I will show you this another idea what could happen here knight c3 b takes on c3 with these two pawns okay uh, so uh, now bishop e6 and the problem is that these pawns are a very very easy target the knight can jump for example to a5 win one of the pawn then another the pawn then probably this pawn would be very vulnerable and so on so black still have uh, a lot of activities of course queen b7 wouldn't be that, that great because after rook b8 uh, yes white can win the the knight however also gonna lose the exchange because now this rook cannot be defended that is the huge huge problem because of course uh the the rook controls b1 so probably something like bishop b3 try to consolidate this position and we would have this position where black has the pair of bishops and the exchange uh, for this uh, two pawns so there are two extra pawns and uh, yeah still black stands slightly better here so all of this is possible Jan Krzysztof Duda is not interested and he played knight d4 complicating the position even more we have knight c6 now uh, saying okay now I'm uh, gonna attack your uh, your knight is attacked you know three times you have to do something what are the options according to the engine this is the strongest move bishop f3 uh, but it's very difficult to 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 find the, the continuation here knight d4 e takes on d4 and now uh, a very interesting sacrifice is on the board here knight f2 and now if white takes with the rook we're gonna have a pretty scary variation with the queen e1 um, and then after rook f1 bishop d4 so it looks like very very scary checkmate is coming but there is move like bishop e3 which is still better for black now the point is that the rooks are connected there is no check so it looks like sacrifice or the bishop and now taking with the bishop is not that great here actually black have to take with the queen and um, to get the better position so um that was the option to play now uh, of course if the queen takes uh, after exchanging with check this knight is also hanging uh, so king h1 and then after bishop e6 this position is slightly better for black uh, definitely the material is equal but the pair of bishops and the character of the position activeness of the pieces uh, open semi open file and this knight is still very bad knight on a4 definitely better position for uh, for black
Uh, however, here bishop e3 was possible. That would be much better option if bishop e3 is played immediately, and uh, and then black would have to um, sacrifice th this this knight here. This way, probably the best. And then after g takes on h3, rook h4, giving back the exchange. So that would be probably the best option. Here we would have queen e3 and so on. King h1, bishop h3, and it looks like black still have a, a lot of activity, of course. However, keep in mind that white is exchanged up in this position. Still, you know, uh, very playable for both of the sides. So after knight c6, we didn't have this complicated bishop f3, but rather knight c6. Uh, we have b takes on c6, so it seems like, okay, pretty simple plan. Uh, I'm gonna have two extra pawns. Your pawns are double on the, uh, on the c file so it's it's gonna be pretty easy we have bishop f3 now attacking the, the knight bishop f5 over protecting that knight and now c5 making some extra space extra move for the queen so the queen potentially can come to c4 as you already see this bishop controlling all of this diagonal the rook controls all of these squares around the rook can come, come to uh, to b8 and it can be very very tricky and this is one of the lines I would like to show you uh, this is very special uh, Jordan Van Forest actually has the winning position here but it's extremely complicated and both of the players burn a lot of time so far believe me or not this is move 16 and they have especially young Krzysztof Duda burn most of his time uh, he's on the minutes on his clock uh, and uh, definitely this is very difficult decision now how to play also by Jordan Van Forest. He has all the initiative. Now the winning continuation is actually rook a to b8 which is pretty natural and then after queen c4 what he has to find and calculate is knight f2. In the interview he said that he saw knight f2 but not in this particular moment. Uh, so this is you know the engine line which is extremely difficult to, uh, to calculate now what would happen if, if king f2 for example and uh, then bishop d3 very nice uh, double attack on the queen and and stuff uh, now if the queen goes for example uh, wherever to to f4 it's gonna be of course uh, harassed by the by the bishop so maybe queen g4 but then we can harass the the, the queen still with the pawn uh, let's say queen h3 avoiding the dark squares but then rook b4 is extremely strong and now the point is that this rook gonna come to h4 together with the bishop on e5 gonna win the queen so white have to actually try to save it but uh, at that time gonna lose this knight so that now the material is equal even white has one extra pawn but the position is completely lost so king f2 was not possible rook f2 would be much better however again we're gonna have bishop d3 uh, so queen ha can move actually also let's say the bishop f4 let's see now there is another problem rook d4 uh, if the rook takes we have this rook d4 so this is another move if the pawn takes um the, the problem is queen e1 and the checkmate here uh so of course we cannot do that uh, so e4 that would be the move uh, but it's still the position is still extremely difficult of course uh, the knight is is falling and after a uh, king h1 because the bishop d4 is the very serious threat uh, still we can play something like f5 attacking the pawn one more time which is quite important because of course the pawn cannot take because of the pin so the queen would have to retreat somewhere but then f takes on e4 this pawn has a really great protection it's very very strong pawn also the bishop is, is doing really great job here and uh, let's say that this rook is a very active bishop is a very active this pawn for now is you know protected by the white pieces but let's say that the bishop and the rook are out of the game so uh, definitely very very comfortable position to play uh, by the black so that was the chance to actually play this rook a to b8 however we have h5 probably Jordan Van Forest played a, a prophylactic move something like g4 uh, kicking this bishop which staying on this ideal diagonal would be possible but now white gonna have a little bit of initiative so first of all young Krzysztof Duda should just exchange this uh, dangerous uh, knight 
So what could happen? Bishop on e4, bishop on e4, and then a knight can go back uh, to c3. And now there is no way that uh, black, of course, gonna give the, the dark square bishop for that knight, and that would make completely no sense. So probably something like bishop d3, uh, maybe rook d1, and then queen c5 winning this pawn uh, and this position is uh is probably equal according to the engine there are not many complications here uh, but white have to be much more precise as this uh pieces are still you know out of the game so white need couple of moves to actually consolidate the position however we have queen before and this is actually uh the mistake and it's quite serious mistake now the point is that Jordan van Forest in this position for unknown reason play queen e6 and this move is a pretty pretty weak i i mean i don't see the sense we would have to ask jordan uh, but you will understand why this move was not, not that great first of all what jordan should play here is knight g5 and now this bishop has to go somewhere there are two ways of of moving the bishop if bishop e2 e2 then we're gonna have knight h3 and now this is gonna be extremely complicated of course if the knight is taken you already see that you're gonna have a trouble some some checkmate ideas here uh, so white would have to play something like f4 uh, but then rook d4 again makes a really great job uh, this knight is attacked twice uh, of course a queen cannot take because of the bishop and of course if the pawn takes we're gonna have queen e2 and again this is the checkmate here rook f2 uh, doesn't really matter because queen d1 and we're gonna have this kind of checkmate so that's not even possible to uh, to take that king h1 would have to be played but then rook d4 works again uh, if the rook is taken then of course we're gonna have this attack together and on the on the on the king on the position of the king so it's a very very uh, bad idea to take it uh, bishop c4 would be better uh, but uh, simply rook c4 a queen c4 and now rook d8 it looks like very very slow but it's still very dangerous of course the the knight still cannot be taken for the same reasons uh e4 probably is the best here uh but now black can sacrifice the knight here on the f2 and even yeah rook f2 is 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 actually forced rook d1 rook f1 everything looks like all good for for white however uh after queen e4 of course the queen cannot take because we're gonna have the checkmate rook d1 queen c4 and after knight c3 black stands a slightly better with the queen against two rooks so uh, it's kind of equal however it's still these two bishops on these diagonals doing a lot of good things okay so let's say that black really really have a huge edge here uh, despite being uh let's count th the same material but no black is completely uh in, in completely better position here uh, another option here would be actually a uh, bishop c6 with the idea of ke keeping the bishop and controlling g2 so the checkmate by the queen and the bishop would not work but then rook a to b8 the queen would have to move somewhere uh, and then knight h3 with the check and now again g takes on h3 actually in this case is 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 much better uh but it's still not enough because e first rook d3 kicking the queen and uh, knight c3 probably would be the best here but again bishop h3 and now queen g5 is coming and there is no checkmate however after let's say rook e1 saving the exchange uh queen g5 king h1 uh the queen can come to f6 attacking this bishop and also attacking the pawn on f2 so that's a huge problem so yes the bishop can be uh, defended but after queen f2 uh the position is a uh, very difficult for white probably it's lost actually it's lost bishop d2 is the only way uh, to connect the rooks because the rook was under attack and the check made the next move um so rook d2 and you already see there is another mate here so rook e2 is forced uh, and after rook e2 
queen e2 is forced just to you know uh, control all of these squares uh, so probably rook b2 and only then after exchanging uh, it's still much better for white of course this uh, is impossible to uh, to follow the line to to calculate all of this line it's it's just insane it looks like white uh, still have some edge and s still have some chances however with the two bishops pair of bishops is extremely strong this bishop also is controlling all the squares together with the rook uh, so the, the king stays over there and then have to stay there so the position is hopeless uh, even if trying to play something like knight e4 let's say rook c2 uh, going after this pawn so it's not that easy to move the knight uh, of course the rook is under attack so let's say rook b1 and now bishop h6 wins the game uh, because this pawn is under attack it cannot really be defended if the rook come here then of course bishop gonna take because we're gonna have the checkmate on the first rank and if uh, white tries to do some uh, some gymnastics like this one it would not work because of the bishop g2 and now rook d2 attacking this knight and now if the knight is moved then we're gonna have the checkmate uh, and if not then of course white gonna lose uh, the whole piece and the game so uh, completely crazy lines However, knight g5 at the end was winning and uh, there were no hope for white to actually save that position. Uh, but it was very, very uh, complicated. And, and I, as I said, Jordan van Forest went for queen e6, which doesn't make much sense because now... Uh, white makes the move bishop d1. The idea is to defend the knight, okay? It's defending the knight. Uh, and now the queen can escape to e1 from this uh, very, very bad position. So that was the idea. It was losing idea, but that was the idea. Uh, Jordan had to spot this knight g5. He didn't. Now he has a bishop e5. He played bishop e5. So it starts to be very, very dangerous. But as you already see, the queen has to move. Uh, the queen make two moves to actually make these things happen. So uh, it was, you know, losing two tempi, which were very important. Now we have f3. Very important important move attacking the the knight now Jordan uh, Van Forest actually set up the trap he played queen e7 of course the knight cannot be taken because of the queen h4 and this is completely losing if h3 we're gonna have bishop h3 and now if let's say queen e1 trying to exchange the queens then bishop g3 wins the game uh, let's say queen e2 and now bishop g4 and of course the checkmate is coming in couple of uh, moments uh, even rook uh, f3 doesn't work because of course we're gonna have the checkmate if bishop f3 uh consolidating this position a, a bit it's still losing because of bishop g2 uh, and after bishop g2 we're gonna have bishop h2 first even with the bishop on g2 it still works all of this okay we have the uh very well known uh pattern uh, in this case the rook stays on f1 so that would be the checkmate as well so that doesn't work g3 obviously doesn't work because bishop g3 we're gonna have the checkmate here uh, and in this position, this this bishop h3, we still gonna have the checkmate. Rook g1 doesn't work because now we're gonna have rook d1 and the rook is pinned. So that is the problem. All white can do is uh, drop some, some queen. But of course, at the end, we would have the checkmate on g2. So that would not work. And uh, finally, uh, e takes on f5. We're gonna have queen before winning the queen and also winning the game. So, uh, young Krzysztof Duda cannot take the knight, uh, it's poison knight, and now we have queen e1. So, that was the whole idea uh, of young Krzysztof Duda to bring the queen actually to e1 and control h4. Very nice maneuver. Uh, he missed that continuation with the with the knight g5, but but yeah, uh, still Jordan also missed, so that was that was okay. And now Jordan Van Forest uh, has to do something with the knight. The knight is under attack. There are two ways. One is the very complicated, but both of the players are on the minutes, and this is only move twenty. So they have to make in this very sharp position twenty moves with the minutes this is just incredible so the the hard variation uh jordan could go for the knight g3 now the knight cannot be taken because after rook d1 
uh black is winning here this is coming and the checkmate is coming nothing can be done here queen d4 trying to defend uh, but of course then we are gonna have rook d8 kicking the queen queen can uh, go somewhere but it's gonna be harass and at the end on b4 we're gonna have this beautiful bishop g4 and the queen gonna come to h4 and we're gonna have the checkmate even if the if the bishop is taken and the rook gonna make some space it's of course not enough because now we're gonna have rook d1 so attack not from this side uh, and another check here on h1 but from this side so that's of course it's also uh the checkmate rook f1 and now we're gonna have the checkmate the same way uh, even with the rook f3 it just simply doesn't work uh much better would be rook f2 probably the only move but still queen h4 and black has really really active uh continuation of course the the knight cannot be taken for the same reason uh f4 would have to be played and then after knight e4 uh, attacking the rook rook could yeah just just go and black still can just exchange the queens maybe would not do that uh but still black has a really really active much better position uh let's say that these pieces are not really active and uh, this especially this this pair of bishops is extremely extremely strong so still white would be in a lot of troubles definitely a very very nice game but your by jordan uh but short on time he just went for the for the easy uh, safe option and he just uh, won one of one of the pawns back we have knight c5 queen c5 so exchanging this really nice placed a knight which didn't have a good squares to go uh so this is why you know this is the quite a success for Jan Krzysztof Duda who exchanged this bad knight on a4 this was so bad knight for whole game so far uh, but now we have a4 and Jan Krzysztof Duda starts to uh, attack with the pawn and this pawn can be extremely extremely dangerous uh, of course the bishop would have to give some support which is not easy uh but you know this bishop is still on the right diagonal uh black still have very very strong pieces another bishop is also very strong so uh it's uh, it's 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 still pretty much okay but low on time jordan van forest um first play rook a to b8 uh so now simply going after this pawn so this is why we have queen f2 defending bringing extra defender and now jordan just blocked the pawn so we have rook a3 uh, and now queen c5 going after the bishop and here Jan Krzysztof Duda uh, started to think if he can find some other ways uh, to actually defend that bishop but of course the bishop cannot move here because we're gonna have uh, the attack on the on the pawn as the queen will of course lose the the line of sight on this pawn so would not protect uh probably bishop b3 would be possible but the the move looks like very very artificial uh this bishop could be set up on this diagonal maybe in the right moment on this diagonal so that was possible uh, however Jan Krzysztof Duda decided that he has you know a couple of minutes on the, on the clock he played rook a1 we have queen a5 uh, we have rook a3 queen c5 and the players uh, had the threefold repetition so we had a draw and i would like to show you what happened after uh, round 10. anish giri won against radosław wojtaszek he just tortured him in the completely drawn position and uh, he won against uh, Radosław Wojtaszek that was that that was just disaster for Radek who lost um, another game in this uh, tournament uh, Andrea Jesipienko Fabiano Caruana and Alireza Firuzia six and a half uh, points so half point behind uh, Anish Giri uh, Jordan Van Forest very solid six point Magnus Carlsen five and a half points and uh, Nils Grandelius and Hare Krishna uh has five points Jan Krzysztof Duda Maxim Maxim was in the so difficult position against uh, Donchenko he had the lot lost position but at the end he tricked his opponent and he turned it to the win so that was that was the turning point uh, he still has three games so you know he still can um, do pretty good here in this uh, in this tournament but I, I wouldn't expect uh, as Maxim is something is uh, not going well 
in this tournament. Arian Tari, four points. Uh, Radek Wojtaszek, David Anton, three and a half. And Aleksandr Donchenko, three points. So that was the standings. And if you like this video, press like. If for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. And if you don't want to miss other games on my channel, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.